Hello, everybody, and this is Stacey Chalemi with The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Cheryl Bass today, and she is an amazing children's author. She has done so much for the community, and she just has so much knowledge when it comes to um, writing books and marketing, and she just has a whirlwind of information she's going to share today, and she's going to talk about her books and the purpose for writing the books and the passion behind it that drew her to make these books, so I'm very excited to have you on the show, Cheryl. Tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. So um, I'm Cheryl Bass. Um, I have uh, a master's degree in social work and a master's degree in journalism. And I use both of these um, backgrounds to inform my picture book writing. I have two picture books out that uh, rhyme and uh, they're self-published. The first one's called Baby Dragon's Big Sneeze. It came out in 2022. And the second one is called Baby Dragon Finds His Family. And that came out the end of 2023. And both are, uh, you can find out about both of them through be-kindpublishing.com. So be-kindpublishing.com with a hyphen between the be and the kind. And um, listeners, viewers can get up to 10 free coloring pages when they go to this website. Uh, that they can download and print out for the kids in their lives. I love it. I love it. Now, you know, you spent a lot of your life in in um, in marketing and doing other stuff. So what drew you to want to really write about these children books? What was your the passion behind it and the story behind it? Um, well, I've been writing my whole life. I love to write. And that's uh, I have a journalism degree. And that's how and then I ended up doing PR uh, public relations. I've been doing PR for about 20 years, um, but it started with journalism. And before that, I have written um, personal essays and things like that. And growing up, my sister and I both sing. And so what we would do is we would take uh, famous songs and we would change the lyrics and make them rhyme and so on and make them about various family members and an anniversary or birthday or something of that nature. And um, so that's where the writing started. The first book, uh, Baby Dragon's Big Sneeze, came about in sort of a funny way. Um, about 15 years ago, I was walking down the street and I sneezed really hard. And then I had this ridiculous thought, well, it's a good thing I'm not a dragon because if I were, then this would have done a lot of damage. And then I thought, <laughs> wow, well, this is a children's book. So I went home and I wrote it and I kind of put it in a drawer and didn't do anything with it for about five years or 10 years, actually, and then um, started trying to get it traditionally published. Nothing came out of that, unfortunately, because I'm not famous, I think. Um, and actually, some um, publishing houses actually responded to me saying that they don't like rhyme. And I have strong feelings about the importance of rhyme, which I can get into yeah. in a minute. But I decided um, to go ahead and self-publish it um, a few years ago. And uh, I'm very glad that I did. There are a lot of advantages to self-publishing. So tell me some of the advantages of self-publishing, because I've, I've done my personally, I've done traditional and I've done self-publishing and I found self-publishing to be more rewarding in many ways. So maybe you could tell the audience a little about the differences between the two and why self-publishing might be a better option for many people out there, especially even people who are thinking about publishing a book and they're going through, you know, all these different things, trying to publish their book and get pitches out and trying to get, you know, and trying to get people interested in the book. So maybe you can go over it and, and explain to people why self-publishing might be the way to go. Okay, so um, self-publishing, well, first of all, with children's picture books, say each publishing house has maybe 10 spots a year for a uh, children's picture book. Mm -hmm. um, those 10 spaces are going to go to people like Jimmy Fallon and all of those late night hosts and the celebrities that put out a children's picture book, who ironically don't uh they do have the money to self-publish they're the ones who could self-publish more easily than regular folks but they're taking up those slots um and um so the but the advantages to self-publishing are uh one you have a lot more creative control i was able to pick my illustrator and tell him exactly what i wanted my dragon to look like what i wanted my little girl to look like what the people are wearing what's happening on each page and go back and forth like that um, if I were traditionally published, I would not have any say even in who the illustrator is and what their yeah. style is. And I would just have to, you know, whatever, whatever I got was what I got. Um, also, there is a longer timeline with traditional publishing. 
one of the things that propelled me to self-publish my first book, um, unfortunately, was that my father was very ill. He was dying. And I wanted him to be able to see the book before he passed away. With a traditional book, a traditionally published book, it takes about five years from the time you sign a contract until it's published. And I knew I didn't have that kind of time. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, my father passed away on September 4th, 2022. Mm, the book came fine. out October 19th, 2022. So he missed it by a few weeks, but he did get to see the pictures in black and white. He just didn't get to see them in color. But the timeline is another reason that it's great to self-publish. Also, um, the royalties are higher. They can be like 50% or some, uh, you know, in some yeah. cases with self-publishing versus traditional publishing. So those are the reasons that I that I prefer self-publishing. Yeah, I found even with traditional publishing companies, they take most of the profit away and you do all the work and it's very time consuming. And like you said, it takes a lot longer to get everything, you know, published and you don't really have that much control. It's, it's really them who has have the control. And, um, you know, I, I found when I self-published even my books, like you said, I had more control. I received higher royalties and, you know, it, and it, you know, once you understand the processing and you have, you know, out, you outsource to people who, you know, are credible, you know, it, it makes the, the, the whole process of it a, a lot easier. And uh, I agree with you. I think I think self-publishing is the way to go. And I think that's why so many people nowadays self-publish. If you notice, a lot of people self-publish. And I don't think it's because they, you know, they can't get their book published. I think a lot of people realize that there are a lot of better, you know, benefits to it as well. What mm -hmm. do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, the whole thing about rhyming, I, I was really wanting my book to rhyme. Um, a lot of traditional publishing houses um, are not filled with people who are social workers. Yeah. So they don't understand that there are actually developmental advantages for children for books that rhyme. Yeah. Um, this is why nursery rhymes are so popular for children. Um, right. It really helps with language acquisition. It helps encourage reluctant readers. They can anticipate what the next word is going to be. Um, so, so those are the, the reasons that, um, I'm really a strong proponent of rhyming and stories. So I really wanted to, to keep it that way and, and not have to change that for a traditional publishing house. And I liked how colorful your books were, you know, you use oh, vibrant you. colors and I think that's great too, because I think that draws attention also, you know, cause when you have like plain colors, it, 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 it kind of shuns away the interests of the reader, but you had very, vi you have very vibrant colors in your books. And, and I think that really does a lot because it, it attracts them to, to the, the animal, the dragon and, and the mm -hmm. background scenery. And then you have the Ryman, which I think Ryman is very fun. Not mm -hmm. only is it good for your cognitive skills and it helps with your developmental skills, you know, as children are young, it, it makes it fun. It makes it mm -hmm. interesting. And I think it keeps them involved in it. Like you said, they can guess what the next word is. And I feel like that's really, you know, really, um, a very good way of, you know, really drawing the child into the book. And mm -hmm. it's great for your imagination skills. Cause I know when I was young, I used to love to dream about like, you know, imagine things like dragons and dinosaurs mm -hmm. and all that type of mm -hmm. stuff, you know? And so I, I think that's great how you really sculpted the book and you, you know, and so, and you wrote also a second book. So, you know, what made you want to write the second book? Was it a sequel or was yeah. it something that you just got an idea in your head and you wanted to continue? Um, well, let me first, when you, you talked about how colorful they are, if you don't mind, I'll show you what they yeah, look Yeah, please do. This is the first book. I don't know if this is coming out blurry. I think if, if you could see move it. back a little. Yeah, when you move it back a little, if you could twist it a little. Yeah, that, that yeah, perfect. Yeah, if you twist it that way. Baby Dragon Speaks Me, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? I think if you twist it like this way, you could you could see it a little bit. I don't know. I don't think it's working. Yeah, I think you but, it, it did in the beginning. It did in the beginning, but okay. Well, and this is my second book, but I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you could you could see it a little bit. Yeah, it's very vibrant. You got a lot of oranges and yellows, and you got you got really pretty greens going on. Yeah. And, uh, I liked how I liked how you you designed it. It's very vibrant. Thank and you. Was, was there as like a particular message, like anything? Yes. Like 
So, so, um, so let, I'll give you a synopsis of both stories and, and what the messages are. So the first story, basically, you've got a dragon. He's he's a baby and he's flying around happy as can be. And for some reason, some way he catches a cold. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens when dragons, when they sneeze, yeah. you know, they fire. <laughs> so this dragon accidentally sneezes and burns down a village. Oh, geez. and he is horrified that he has done this. And when he realizes what happened and all the townspeople want to attack him because they're very angry that he, of course, burned down their village. But one little girl, she's very brave. She decides to get his side of the story and goes to his cave and asks him why he would do such a thing. So that it also has a message of not assuming the worst about others. Mm -hmm. you know, she actually asked him why he would do this instead of just assuming that he did it on purpose. Um, and she comes to learn from him that he has a cold. He didn't mean to. And she finds out that he hatched alone in this cave. He doesn't have parents to help him. So she talks to the townspeople and they get together and they help him get well. And in turn, he helps them rebuild. Yeah. So it's about friendship, um, accountability, um, you know, apologizing when you've done something wrong, reciprocity, forgiveness. Um, it's got all of those kinds of social emotional learning messages in there. Um, and social emotional learning is what adults call sort of soft skills. So these are the qualities that employers look for um, when hiring someone with adults, um, you know, teamwork, uh, being a team player, um, being willing to accept responsibility and take accountability when you've made a mistake, um, forgiveness. Those types of things are these, these lessons that you learn early on. So that's what the first book is about. So, you know, he uh, helps them rebuild after they help him get well. The second book, he's been living with the humans for a while and he starts to feel out of place because yeah. he's the only dragon and they're all humans. So he decides to go on a quest and he along the way meets an elf, a unicorn and a fairy. And mm -hmm. he helps them with various tasks along the way um, while he's looking for his dragon family. And spoiler alert he comes to learn that his family are the humans that have been helping him all along. Oh, so wow. you think if, when you buy the book or you look at the book that he's going to meet all these other dragons and he doesn't, his family are the humans. So it's particularly, it, it deals with a sense of belonging. It's great for kids that feel out of place. They feel like they don't quite fit in. Yeah. Um, it's particularly good for kids who are either adopted or have a non-traditional family structure. I like that. I like that a lot. And, and it was, was that your goal in the beginning or as you were writing and creating the character that kind of came to you? Well, the second story actually came out of an, an, a developmental edit with my editor in the first okay. story. So oh, I had written the first story without any explanation of where his parents were. And um, the editor, this is why it's so important to have an editor. Yeah. She did something called a developmental edit. That's the first edit where you find holes in the story. And she said, well, he's a baby. Why don't, why aren't his parents helping him? Where are his parents and all this? And then I went back and wrote some, um, a couple of paragraphs uh, mm -hmm. about, you know, the fact that he hatched alone in a cave. Yeah. So that's why he needed the townspeople to help him. And then in turn, he helps them rebuild. But yeah. then that is where I then was able to bounce off of that whole concept. Okay. He's alone. He doesn't have parents. Yeah. How's he going to feel after a few months? maybe I'll deal with the whole feeling like he doesn't belong issue. Right. So, yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. You know, I, I think it's so important for children to learn these qualities because I think when they learn at a young age, they exemplify it and it carries through into their adult years. And so books like yours, I think are really meaningful because they not only entertain, but you're, you're teaching them at the same time and you're making it fun. So you're, you're, you're incorporating rhymes and you're making it colorful, but yet at the same time, you're, you're teaching them principles that they can practice in their childhood years and exemplify in their adulthood years, which I think is really amazing, you know, cause a lot of times you don't always see that, you know, like people will write stories, they're, they're, you know, they're, um, entertaining, but they don't have meaningful meanings behind the story. So yours does. And, and that's what I like about it. I like about a lot. Thank you. Now, are you, are you considering using, going into a third book or is this something you're thinking about maybe in the future? Yes, I do want to have a third book, um, possibly in 2025. So I wanted this year to be about recouping some of the initial outlay of funds for the first two books and really spending the time working on marketing 
and and that sort of thing. And then 2025 coming out with a third book. I don't know yet what's going to happen to our dragon in the third book. Oh, I like that. So we we have to wait and see. Now, where can people find your books? So um, they're on barnesandnoble.com, target.com, walmart.com, um, and of course, amazon.com, but also um, www.be-kindpublishing.com. And you can actually get the books for less um, on the bekindpublishing.com website, be with the hyphen kind publishing. It's cheaper there than through any of these other sites. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And, and you also get the 10 free coloring pages if you go to my website. I love that. I love that you give that away. That's, you know, pretty amazing because I, I think kids love to, um, to you, you know, to color and to draw and, you know, especially when you have like pictures of dragons and stuff like that, it really, I think, exemplifies people's imaginations and, and children can like really, you know, make those, those characters into, you know, because a lot of times you when you when you're young especially me being a Pisces I always like imagine these these characters in my head and you know sometimes it always doesn't match with the book but it matches with you know sometimes you have your own little world going on you know like you you know and so it's it's nice because it you know and they could also you know think about themselves you know their own story in their own head you know and uh so it, it's it's nice when you can be able to use you know go into a, and color and and create they're creating their own little story in a way right right you know mm -hmm. so I like that a lot I like that a lot and so and right so right now you have it in those stores and you know I I like I I think it's really important for children to to learn these qualities and was there anything that really made you um want to want to you know these children to learn these qualities did you see things in our society that kind of you said mm, you know kids really need to be maybe more respectful or more kind and you know you thought about you know what I'm going to show them this way you know is, is what was your the meaning you know that really made you want to do this it, well, my master's in social work um, is is part of that. And I okay. wanted to do something that um, I felt was a legacy for me. I don't have children yeah. of my own. And I wanted this to be my books to be my legacy. So I wanted my books to have what's called social emotional learning, which are those soft skills, those, those messages of teamwork yeah. and reciprocity and forgiveness and accountability um, that make make us good kind citizens yeah. um and in fact i called my publishing company be kind publishing with the hyphen between the b and the kind um for that reason and it it's sort of a riff on the expression it's nice to be important but it's more important to be nice yeah. um so i want to get back to that and i feel like it came both books came out at a really good time post covid you know a lot of kids yeah. are a little behind in terms of those non those, those softer skills because they've had um, online schooling for three years, yeah. um, many of them, um, but they haven't had, they've missed out on some of that give and take that you learn in the classroom, sharing yes. and things like that. Um, so it, I think having books that make the characters fun and they're learning those lessons, but in a fun way, I think that's really important. Oh, I agree totally with you. I, I think it's very important. And I, I think especially, you know, some people, have, you know, they, they homeschool also, but I think it's really important sometimes, you know, to interact with other children and to, and, and to exemplify what you learn at home too, because like, you know, sometimes, you know, um, parents don't realize how important it is to, you know, really, you know, be in a setting where you can interact with the children and you can, you can take the skills that your parents teach you or the skills that you're learning in school and actually put them to good use because, you know, and then it also helps with your communication skills too, because if you're, yeah. if you're being respectful, you can see that, that the, the, the response on the other side, a child is going to be respectful back to you, or they might be happy that you said something kind to them, you know, where if you, if you say something and, and it's not so nice and you see the negative reaction, you may, you might realize, you know what, oh, maybe I, I shouldn't do that because it hurts that other individual. And then you can change your actions and, and next time maybe do it a different way. You know, right. so I think it's really important to interact with groups of children and, and really, you know, put the, the lessons 
lessons that you teach in your book to work, you know, because I think it, it's something that I think in our society, I think we're lacking it a little. I see right. you know, in our society, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. And I, you know, and sometimes I wonder if it's because of the lack of communication, all the, everyone's on their phones, everyone's, mm -hmm. you know, on the computer, everyone's not interacting as much as they did when we were kids, you know, and maybe, you know, people have to take time out to really get kids together and to, you know, really interact and, and learn to how to, how to communicate better one another. So they, they, they learn these skills, you know, so I'm glad you wrote the book because I think it, it helps a, a lot, a lot. So in your next book you have, do you, are, is it going to be like a continuation? Do you, do you have yes, a it'll be, it'll be something else happening to the dragon. And I'm toying also with the idea um, of maybe having some plushies. Okay. Um, or, you know, stuffed animals of the characters. My second book, one of the characters sings a song and I sing and I, and so I'm sort of toying with the idea. I'll, I'll have to look into it of having a plushie of that animal where you pull a string and it, and it sings a song and it'd be maybe my voice. Oh, I like so that. And integrate my, my singing into this too, or maybe having an activity book, you yeah. know? Um, so so there are a lot of ideas of of where I could go with this, but I I really love the dragon and the other characters, and I've I've come to I, I've been world building, so I have this whole like you know imaginary community that I've created, and so now yeah. I really like these these people and these animals, and I want to see what happens to them next, just like everybody else. Oh, that's so, so cool. Yeah, and you, know, you you could also even create like videos. And nowadays, everyone like watches. You know, they have like websites where they have videos and they teach lessons. You know, and of mm. kindness and other things. And mm. and you know, I remember when when we were kids, they had they had sometimes they had books at the end of the book. You could hit the button, and you might have like a song. You know, at the end of the mm. book and mm -hmm. some stuff like that. So that right. would be really cool. Those would be really cool ideas to do because I I think yeah. you know, I do have trailer videos that are like 45 seconds and oh, nice. see them on my website. Um, but, uh, but having little videos that have little messages, that might be a great idea too. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that would be really cool. Cause then you could see the dragons and they're giving out, you know, they're kind of, you're kind of teaching something in every video, you know, mm -hmm. and, it, and I think that would be really cool mm -hmm. because I think the lessons you teach in your book are fantastic. When I was looking yeah. through it, I really, I really liked, you know, how you, you created the books, how you wrote the books, the colors you used, everything, everything. It was really great. I, I really well, liked the first book got 10 international book awards. Oh, and wow. Bestseller status, um, seven times on on Amazon. The second book hit Amazon bestseller status twice. Um, I'm in the running for one award that I can't talk about with the second book, but um, the second book is, is not quite six months old. So it's still so new that I've applied for some awards, but I haven't really heard back yet. So, okay. Um, so we'll see. Oh, that's so cool. I'm very yeah. excited for you. Thank so you. if people go on your website, like where do they go to find, you know, the books and all the information you have on your website? Where on the website or no, what is the, the website the, address? The website address. Okay. So it's be hyphen kind publishing.com. So be kind publishing.com with a hyphen between the be and the kind. I and like that's it. where they can get the 10 free coloring pages. They can watch the little um, 45 second trailers. They can order the books directly um, and they can watch uh, some news clips and read some reviews of the books and so on. Now, if you had to like summarize everything that you were talking about today, the different qualities and, and just everything we went over, what are some of the things you'd like to emphasize in today's discussion to the listeners? Um, well, one thing I'd like to say is that self-publishing is easier than you would think. There are people out there, the self part, I thought was going, I would be alone in a room with a book like self-publishing for dummies or similar, mm -hmm. and um, I'd be all alone. Yeah. Um, but I'm a member of the Society for Children's Book Writers and Illustrators and um, and also Children's Book Insider. And as a member of these types of professional organizations, they often let you watch um, archived videos. And I saw an archive video of a woman named April Cox, and she has a business called Self-Publishing Made Simple. And she walks you through, like for people who have never published a book before and want to self-publish, she'll get on a Zoom call with you and she'll walk you through things like how to file it with the um, Library of Congress. 
Yeah. So it's copyrighted. How mm -hmm. to order ISBN codes, which are like the little UPC symbol things on the back of the book, all of those kind of things, um, how to upload it onto Amazon. All And she has also people that she works with. So she has um, 12 to 15 illustrators that she works with. Yeah. And so I looked at all their websites and picked the ones that look the best to me. And then, um, and then I had them all draw uh, in black and white, the same image. Um, I paid them each $50 to draw the same image from the same scene um, in my book. And, um, and then I was able to narrow it down to my top two. And then I used my friends and family as a focus group. And I said, which dragon do you like best and why? Especially yeah. friends and family who had kids. Yeah. You know? And so I was able to find my illustrator through her. I was able to find um, an editor through her. I was able to find my website designer. She has all these vendors that she yeah. has vetted. Um, and so it's not quite the lonely, um, insurmountable um, proposition that you think it is yeah. self-publishing if you have someone in your corner like that. Wow. Yeah. I like that a lot because it's not as difficult as people think, but you know, when you go into it and you've never done it before, it can be scary because you don't know where to begin. But right. when you do have people helping you and guiding you along the way, it, it makes it a lot easier. You don't realize, you know, it's still a lot of work. When you write a book, it's very draining, but once you, once you finish and the results you see, it's very rewarding. It definitely mm -hmm. is. It definitely right. is. Even along the way, um, my illustrator is in India and my web designer, I think lives in the Philippines. So this is, was like a worldwide um, mission that yeah. we were on. And every time I would get an email from the illustrator, it was like Christmas, you know, opening the attachment and seeing, you know, um, my cre creatures coming to life. It was very yeah. exciting for me. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's such a great accomplishment when you, once you're done, it's like, it's really exciting, you know, cause mm -hmm. then you're finished and then the world gets to see it. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it's, and just, you know, just bringing joy and, and, and teaching one, you know, if you can get that message across to one person and that person really enjoys it and really learns from it, that's, that's, that's like such a rewarding feeling, such a, a feeling of achievement, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I, I say to everybody, if they, if they have a dream about writing a book, you know, don't think that you can't, you can, mm -hmm. you know, Definitely. it's just, I think it's just finding the, the, like you said, the right resources you found, you found that, that, that society and you, you checked out their videos that were in and you learned from them and then right. you just approached it. And I joined Facebook groups. There are Facebook groups for everything. So if you type in Facebook groups for authors or writers, you know, or self-publishing, things like that, you can also find um, groups on Facebook with other people that can support you as well. So yeah. it's amazing. Oh my God. I, I am so proud of you. I think you did an amazing job. And I love the idea that you're continuing it. And then you have so many other ideas. You know, I think the, the plush animals are going to be a great thing. And I think, you know, continuing the books is great because I think, you know, once people get into the first one and they get into the second one, you know, they look for more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's great because you can continue the learning process. And mm -hmm. it's not just a story, but you're, you're learning great qualities that will lead you throughout life and actually help you really elevate your life. Because if you have respect and you have kindness and you learn how to communicate well with others, you know, like we were talking about earlier, it's going to travel throughout your life. And those type of skills will actually help you grow in, in many ways, you know, with relationships, with work, you know, with family and, and, and so forth. So I, I commend you. I, I thank you so much, you know, for doing what you're doing, because I think, I think it's really great. And I think you're, you're going to do a lot of good for a lot of people and help a lot of children. So thank you, thank so, you much. so much. I really, I really, you know, love it. Now, and now before we go, do you have anything that you'd like to share with our listeners? Anything else that you'd like to share? Nope. Just that you can uh, find my books um, on amazon.com, target.com, walmart.com, um, barnesandnoble.com, Goodreads. Um, and um, if you're a librarian uh, or a, a teacher through Ingram Spark, dot com um and my of course my website where the books are cheaper which is be hyphen kind publishing dot com i love it i love it well thank you so much for being on the show cheryl i i really enjoyed this and you know i i love what you're doing and i thank think you. you're doing a great job so thank you so much this has thank been you. awesome thank, thank you, you for having me oh you're welcome you have a great day you too take care